Day 42. After picking myself back up and cutting my losses, I set out for adventure. Thinking I could avoid a dragon encounter, in fact I found myself run into another. I saw flames being breathed onto the distant meadows. It was a bronze drake. I summoned my minions and got my bow at the ready, but rest assured, it was chicken tonight. Babe, we're going to KFC. I went back sneakily to steal some of the dragon's gold piled upon its roost whilst it wasn't looking, taking some of its loot quickly before making my exit. I found a floating island structure sitting upon a stone brick foundry. It seemed like it was a house of some sorts. Was it another wizard's base? Regardless, I flew down below where waterfalls littered the crevice. Something had carved out. I found a block of diamonds here. Maybe it was powering some magic, but being the magpie I was, I just took it. Ask questions later kind of thing. On top of the islands, there were jack-o'-lanterns and trees and sugarcane by a man-made lake, which acted as a cover to hide the base in a Thunderbird's mountain kind of way. Now, when there's a party there's always someone to ruin the fun. A hippogriff. Another jealous bird tried to break my bond with my rock. Well, that ended badly. Moments later, I found a grand wooden structure trailing up to the sky, a magical carved out tree, and inside was vines, crops, and an endless pillar to the top. This was a beautiful structure. Personally, I feel like the owner didn't even consider what would happen if someone just lit it up with a flint and tinder though. In the dark by the ocean, I found a bronze drake once more. Perhaps it was the same dragon or another foe. I tried to put my golem fighting strategy into place by trying to duke him, but he got angry and just sprayed me with his flames like a flamethrower. It didn't matter how many items I had to protect myself, it still wasn't enough. And as much as I love my pet, she was still kind of weak. Day 43. I crafted blaze cream and some glass bottles and filled them in the river and concocted them together with some blaze powder as an accelerant in a brewing stand to make some potions. These potions were so I had some kind of additional buff in combat. Once I'd done dilly dallying, I had a potion of strength and a bunch of fire resistance potions. This would compound upon my trinket kits in a layering effect, so I could hopefully withstand dragon attacks a bit better. I also required a stronger ranged weapon. I set my sights on the diamond strengthened longbow, which shouldn't be too much of a challenge to craft. I crafted the bow from a bunch of diamonds and craftables. Day 44. Now, I wouldn't always recommend anyone to go out at night, especially not to sneak out, but I did that and I decided it fit to fly to the local ice drake pest to crack another try with my boys, but I changed my mind kind of quickly on that one. I actually returned once again to the bronze dragon at the base. Still quite vengeful, but even though my sparkly new bow was more powerful, my pet was still not up to expectations because I got knocked off and fell to my death again. I slipped on some sweet, sweet potions of nectar and it was at that moment, as the ground burst in flames and I fell, I would make my final shots, being eaten whole by a velociraptor. Now, just like clockwork, I snuck into the dragon's roost. The gold was everywhere, but there in the water was a huge dark-scaled beast. Had one of my arrows hit him before I fell in battle, or had something else defeated it? My first dragon slayed. I felt triumphant, but also regretful. What an immense creature. I harvested the dragon's skeleton as its body decayed, taking its bones to use for later. Now I had the dragon skull I had so desperately tried to acquire. The dragon's eye trinket was now a possibility. After creating some prerequisites, I finally crafted the beautiful dragon's eye itself. Now I had night vision, fire resistance, and bonuses to my attack speed. This was the one missing piece that would make dragon slaying a little less of a challenge. I also equipped my mount with some new diamond pet armor. It now looked truly epic, and perhaps it wouldn't actually die as much now. It's time to test. Perhaps I shouldn't have bullied that big tree guy, but it had to be done. I also did some fishing by the lake, one of the more tranquil parts of Minecraft, apart from that zombies can still somehow seem to ruin that one too. Day 45. On this day, I crafted my next powerful artifact. This was the Stone of the Sea, a lucrative trinket that gave me bonuses to my projectile damage, more uses for slaying dragons with my bow from the skies. But not only that, this beautiful necklace grants you underwater vision, water breathing, drinking water purification, and super fast movement underwater, basically turning you into the Little Mermaid. On this day, those tree folk, aka my neighbours, decided to send a whole tree to try to murder me. Seriously, that thing was huge. I guess they sent their dad round. Floating in the sky, top Topped off with a sweet waterfall was a castle keep. I flew up to this thing and it was exactly the same as one of those that I found earlier on in my adventure. Yes, the same farm, 
rooms and structure entirely. Although the interior was a little different, there weren't really any real rooms in the castle. It was just a cesspit of zombies and monsters down below, teasing some floating ore veins in midair, so you know I had to go down there. The layout was frustrating though as it was made up of both sand, gravel and water. So mining ores made the water leak into the room and sand and gravel drop, leaving a gaping hole leading down below where I could potentially fall through the skies to my death. After raiding the castle, I flew down to a neighbouring castle down below. I wouldn't make the same mistake as before however, as I saw those mermaids way before they could try to charm me. It was also at this point when I went for a swim that I experienced how awesome the amulet really was. Apparently I hadn't dispatched of all the mermaids though, as I ended up still getting pulled in and being glitched through the wall. Ah, fun times. Next door to the castle, down the water, was a gigantic medieval city, a whole civilization, like the one that I found earlier, and down in the water was a mythical beast going for a skinny dip. Yeah, there was just a cyclops chilling having a paddle. Perhaps it was cruel to kill the guy, but if tables were turned, you know he'd do the same to me. Perhaps it was kind of overkill though. Day 46. I boarded land and set to explore the city, venturing through throne rooms, houses and other rooms alike, stumbling into a nice accumulation of pure emerald blocks adorning one of them. Shiny. I climbed up some winding stairs, but apparently whoever owned that place kept demonic spiders as pets, which shot lasers at me like a death ray and killed me in cold blood. There's always a bigger fish. This village was actually populated though, and not just by evil creatures, a ton of villagers lived here, more than what could be said for most of the abandoned structures thus far. There were huge stones of iron to farm, blocks like cauldrons for the taking, and more cool stuff. Back at base, I crafted the reforge station to level up my gear somewhat. This thing allowed recrafting of items to basically gamble the stats on them to try to make them better, requiring ore as an extra input to spend on the upgrade. I played around with this a few times until I got a legendary diamond sword out of it. Now this costs a lot of diamonds to play with. Day 47. I also crafted another similar block called the reforging station, sharing a lichen name but it was a different block. Using this I could do the exact same thing on armor pieces and trinkets to stretch the most out of them as possible, although this worked the best on rings. I crafted another enchantment table, but not for the same purpose this time, but I'd need this later. I also made another anvil. I had gathered a ton of various assorted enchantment books from my travels at this point, so I deemed it necessary to improve some of my weapons and also get rid of some of them in the process. It was either that or I could just throw them in the sea, which I thought was pretty stupid. Using the bronze dragon scales I had collected from felling such a legendary beast, I crafted some stronger armor, dragon scale gear. This was particularly effective against dragons themselves and it looked absolutely awesome, especially with my necklace. But if I wanted a full set of this stuff, I'd have to find more dragons. In the evening time, I found a mob tower. This one was really strange though, a mystery of sorts, mainly due to the fact that it was absolutely covered in moss all over it and no monsters were even spawning, maybe because of the holes in the structure and the amount of sunlight leaking in. This meant I got free loot with zero effort. Well, until the blood moon began to start and the sun was setting. Well, then things changed accordingly, of course. Around 8 p.m., the blood moon had engulfed the sky and it looked beautiful with the aurora borealis behind it, making picturesque views. I flew to the village base below it, looking for a spot to stay for the night. Everywhere outside was dangerous at this point. Now, they say that you shouldn't bite the hand that feeds you, but when you find free stuff, it's kind of hard not to take it. Day 48. I found a gigantic village. It was just like some of the normal NPC villages that I'd seen before, but this place was upgraded like crazy, with huge windmills, watchtowers and defences. These guys must have had some serious money. Also, it was pretty creepy that one of the villagers' houses just had a human skull sitting near his table. Okay. While this place was really cool, especially their library, they probably had the coolest enchantment table area that I've personally seen. These guys were so clever, they had more than one library. Kind of pointless though. Sitting on the water, I found a black drake. Perhaps this dragon had fallen from the skies, or maybe it was having a bath in the ocean, but it was at its weakest. A flurry of flames flew up to me as I fired arrow upon arrow down on it below. Its wings definitely weren't working, or so it seemed as it was just gliding on the water, doing some kind of moonwalk back into the mountainside. But alas, it picked up pace and floated toward me, spraying me with its fire breath. With my ice elementals chasing it down, this thing was powerful. It was stronger than the previous ones that I had faced, but I had become more powerful. The 
predator can become the prey, and as it tried to fly away, I felled the beast to the ground as its corpse hit the mountain. I seeked out this trove of treasure nearby and harvested it for all the bones and golden pieces that buried its charcoal blocks. I had hit the jackpot, I struck gold, I was rich. Metaphorically of course, unfortunately gold doesn't actually have that great of a value in Minecraft. But we're telling a story here right? Day 49, I sheared the dragon down to the bone and collected its skeleton as a trophy to create into gear later. Somewhere nearby there was a floating tower of mythical origin, a burning netherrack spire that illuminated in the distance. As if mob towers hadn't become predictable at this point, I decided to embark on more of a challenge. Board a mob tower that actually sat on the ocean. More of a tougher one I guess to conquer. This mob tower had some healthy loot inside, loot that wasn't half bad in comparison to my advanced gear that I'd amassed. I dropped the cyclops boss down a floor and just sniped it through the opening of the wall from my mount. I'd kind of become accustomed at this point to hacking this boss fight. It was just easy loot at this point and once more I was rich in diamonds again. Simple as that. Day 50. The beginning of this day was just reconnaissance, picking up some of the loot that had dropped and been left behind from my previous day of conquest. Now I must say the desert biome is definitely a treacherous place, I'm pretty crazy at that. With flying sandstorms, crazy hawks and ghosts, sea serpents and sandworms, this place is definitely not for the weak hearted. I was finding that even as a seasoned adventurer like me who'd been through some stuff, I was having a hard time here and who knew mermaids liked the desert? After some challenging dogfights in midair, sniping down monsters or at least trying, I scoped out the pyramid down below, making a narrow escape from an obviously placed lava trap. Phew. I boarded a grand ship, another pirate ship. Just like Blackbeard's, this ship was impressive, but unlike Blackbeard's, it actually had a steering wheel. It also was littered with the skulls of both skeletons and nether skeletons, so I imagined maybe the good guys owned this one. So the likelihood of it being another ghost ship or being occupied by the undead was seemingly low. Well, rest assured, the ship's hull was littered with zombies and skeletons. Looks can be deceiving. The cannons on this thing were pretty awesome though. The ship was immense in stature and it had two additional floors to its hull, with the lowest housing all of the chests of loot. Now pirates don't always have treasure, but the iron armor set I found had rich lore and history to it, and it enticed me the most. Also the third mate on the bird's nest serving as a lookout was another one of those trumpet skeletons. I figured that was important to mention, at least just for the memes. I found a desert temple, similar to the pyramid but smaller in size and less exciting. It was filled with weird winged angel things that played beautiful songs but tried to viciously murder me. And as I said before, looks can be deceiving gentlemen. I carefully meandered my way down into the base of the structure, dodging any traps although I might add the loot was quite anticlimactic. Day 51. The bronze drake of the desert plains crawled menacingly across the sand, setting a light to every block around it and coming for my head. But somehow it took a while for it to actually kill me, even at point blank range. Ah sweet sweet revenge. Luckily my magical ice bodyguards don't die when I do, so I returned to see the dragon dead in the sand, or at least it looked that way, turns out it was actually sleeping. Oops. I hid in a small hut and as it took off to the skies, I made my great escape. I was hoping to gather some serpent scales to get some tough armour, but it didn't really go my way unfortunately. Those barrel rolls, where did they learn it from man? In the desert sand stood a beautiful city, the city of Babylon, a true sight to be seen on the water. The farmers had rich potatoes and beets and some nice crops for me, they're always so kind. There was also a big stone head with one of those huge noses, like those famous Maui heads on that Chilean island. Anyways it looked cool but there was really nothing more to it to see. I also found a Mongolian death worm in the sand. Those things are cute but also equally disgusting. Bronze dragons always seemed to be the ones that I had the most luck with, which is probably why I tried my luck at killing another. If I was to be known as the dragonborn I had to actually kill more than one dragon. After all this thing was picking on a nearby town and they needed a hit. Hero. My problem is fighting up close. Because I was a failure and because I guess I wanted to feel better about myself, I went to kill another golem at a battle tower, and that didn't go my way either. Day 52. I crafted a disenchantment table. This was an awesome block which I could use to separate any magical enchantments on gear that I didn't want or need to then put on a book to use on gear that I actually wanted later. For an example, I could strip an iron pickaxe with silk touch and get a silk touch enchantment book and an unenchanted iron pickaxe and then apply the that enchant onto a diamond tool, comprende? I used this thing on a bunch of useless items that I didn't need so I could enchant my current gear with their nice
nice bonuses. I burrowed deep down into a dungeon below ground. This place was littered with rooms and I even found cake. No, the cake is in fact not a lie. The greatest gaming mystery of all time has now been solved. Thank me later. Day 53. I continue to progress through the structure, finding so much loot. This place has so many different floors to it. It went on seemingly forever, deeper and deeper. The rooms deep down in the abandoned mine portion of this structure had powerful boss zombies, armoured villager zombies and a ton of difficult challenging enemies. This place was a true labyrinth and it was actually pretty interesting but it got quite repetitive so we'll just glaze over that for now. Day 54. I crafted a dragon scale helmet from some of my remaining scales. I was literally wearing a dragon's head on my head. Kind of nasty if you think about it but somehow it looked awesome. Day 55. I was attacked by a pack of wild wolves. Wargs. Strange, my spirit animal was always a wolf. I guess I proved I was the alpha by killing them all though. Sorry guys. In a riverside village, a serpent was squirming in the water. Maybe the current had dragged him into stasis. And anyway, these guys were tough to kill, so I took advantage of it to get some scales. I found a boulder upon the sea. It looked like Patrick's house of Spongebob, but this one housed something more sinister. Anyway, turns out this guy was good with the ladies. He had some mermaid girls chilling with him on a nearby rock. Mermaids that pulled me into his lair to probably get me killed. Inside was the Cyclops himself. We'll call him Jimmy, but Jimmy wasn't one of those Ponzi Cyclopses on top of the battle towers. This dude was a big boy, so big that he had a skeleton of some huge monster in his lair that he'd probably already eaten already. This guy was serious business and I wasn't killing one of them who was going for a swim like earlier, so this guy was alert and I had to get up close and personal. I had to kill his mermaids though because they were really getting irritating. Sorry girls. I returned to the Cyclops' lair where I guess my magical servants had finished dispatching of the beast. This guy had a ton of shears in some chests. I guess he needed that many? He had some pet sheep though which was kind of cute in his stable and since he had shears I guess he didn't want to kill them so was he surviving on a diet of wool? Who knows? Who cares? I found a red serpent in the sea near his base though. For some reason the red serpents were weaker or not as acrobatic or something. They didn't seem to do as many flips as the others. I guess they didn't receive the same circus training. They were just AFK at the bottom of the water. Most like those NPCs that you just see at the mall on weekends. Now that's confidence for you. Using some dragon treats that I had created earlier, here's one I made earlier, I tamed a Morok, a type of dragon different to the drakes that I usually killed. This guy was stronger than the rock, so unfortunately I had to kiss my sweetheart goodbye and chill with a new babe, especially if I wanted to have higher chances in the skies in my next showdown, because dragons were not getting any easier. I used a soul stone like before, taming another creature called the Quetzodracle, which is similar to the rock also, but but a lot stronger too. Day 56. With diamond armor, these things looked awesome. I now took to the skies in confidence. I crafted a dragon bone strengthened longbow, blowing my diamond one out of the water, enchanting it with things like rapid fire, range, and infinity, which actually makes it genuinely really overpowered. It was now time. I returned to the ice dragon's mountain. As he sat atop the peak, I let out a flurry of arrows firing over and over, but he was already dead. Was I this powerful already? I took some glass bottles from my base and filled it with ice dragon blood before stripping the monster of its bones. The blood was a valuable fluid that I could further use later for gear. Day 57. I found another Cyclops' lair. He barely flinched as I shot him between the eyes. I mean I. Wait, he really does look like Patrick Star, right? <laughs> as usual, this guy had some affinity for shears and kept the same troop of sheep as pets. Poor guy. I guess this one didn't have mermaids and was lonely though. Not a Chad Cyclops like the former one that we killed. I zoomed through the skies to an autumnal forest ablaze. A dark dragon, a black drake stood dousing it in fire. But this time I had come equipped, adorned in dragon body armor, using the bones of such a beast as my weapon against it, I felled him too. I was now a dragon slayer, a seasoned one at that. The Doverkin, Dragonborn, Fuss, Ro- Okay, that's enough. So with my remaining bottle, I harvested it for its fire dragon blood. I took the tomes and scripture from its roost and all of its other treasures and dipped on out of there, leaving behind its bones. I enchanted some of my other armor, like my leggings and dragon scale boots with some of my remaining enchantments. I also crafted a more powerful dragon sword than the previous one that I had, the one I most likely lost earlier somehow. I crafted the dragon bone greatsword. In retrospect, it probably wasn't the best idea since it was a two-hander and I couldn't use a shield with it, but it did 
did more damage and was more powerful. Big guides need big weapons, if you know what I mean. Moving on. This thing definitely looked imposing once I threw an enchant on it. Day 58. Can we stop to just appreciate how funny the spies look when they jump? Look at these guys. You'd think they were dancing to the sweet, sweet tune of one of those trumpet skeletons or something. I crafted some eyes of Ender and set out to try at least to find a stronghold. It'd be tough and time consuming, but it'd be something to do. On another pirate ship, I dived into the water, killing another sea serpent. Slaying these things was almost a breeze now, especially at range. It's crazy to think how hard it was before. Ah, humble beginnings. Underwater here, there was also a hidden dungeon filled with those guardian creatures, which was really cool. With underwater breathing and an abundance of bandages, it was quite nice to just browse through the chest here, carefree. But the rays of those guardians do get annoying after a while, especially when you realise that the neighbouring rooms were full of elder guardians too. Day 59. On day 18, for some reason I bullied a lot of dinosaurs and I really don't know why. Most of them were herbivores too and did absolutely nothing wrong to me. It was kind of fun to throw javelins at them though, I won't lie. Something tells me I was procrastinating a little though as I reverted back to my pig slaying tendencies too. People never change, huh? But it was on this epic day that the tables would turn as I burrowed below the sand and surfed my way down into a stronghold. Somehow directly into the portal room too actually. Talk about a stroke of luck. I hate silverfish with a passion. Fun fact, they're really not that big in real life, just saying. Now was that point in time where I placed the ender eyes and tried to push them in the right position, you feel? Well, it worked the first time. Not lying. As I dived into the portal below, I reached a barren land. I was entrapped in a prison of seemingly blocks of cheese or moon rock. I mined out the stone and held my breath for what was to come ahead. Now, the end was not exactly how I remembered in the tales. Not only were there perhaps a thousand of the monsters and demons coming for my head, but, well, you get the idea. The towers looked different too, with an enderman head on one of them. I sailed the skies with my new mount, being struck by balls of purple flames by the monster. Vodaving paled in comparison comparison to this beast. In fact, I set my sights on this dragon being the end boss. This was the legendary ender dragon, the most mythical and powerful of them all. An interdimensional dragon that watched over the balance of the space-time continuum, and this would be my most cumbersome task yet. My final task. Day 60. On my mount, one by one, I would break each and all of the glass prism crystals that would feed her power. She would become weak each time, ready for my next move. It was a tricky task, it would take many arrows, perfect handling of my mount, and clever avoidance of all the doom and gloom and danger of the monsters below, her minions that would sought to protect her. But with a final strike, she fell from the skies, being swallowed by the energy of the universe and dropping her wisdom and power below. As I absorbed it all from the beast's soul, I too became more powerful in turn, but her scales were my most sought-after prize, and I had now acquired them. I will go down in legend and stories to come.